You know, I'm a bit of a science geek. Even throughout my schooling, aside from art, it was one of the only other subjects I excelled in. And for that reason, and others, I love science. I love our ability to solve problems and figure things out. Even though we are having a hard time doing that right now, it's a lot to deal with. But we will figure it out one way or another. Or die trying, right? With that said, we have the ability to use our science and technology to truly improve our quality of life here on our planet. We do. We've got the right stuff, baby. We just don't have the right people. That's not our fault. The devil runs that show. Which brings me to my next point. Why in the freak are we still going to Mars? Do you hear them? Ugh, Mars is fake, man. Look, I don't care if you think it's faked. They're spending money. That's definitely not faked. They're using resources. You think those gigantic multi-tone rockets are fake, son? Ever see one of these things lift off? Go see one. A shock wave will rock your body. So how about, how about we take a look at what's going on with the whole Mars thing? Because I don't know if you've all noticed, but they've been doing quite a bit lately. And if you guys aren't paying attention, you will most definitely miss something. As they rev up for this mission to the red planet, we should be revving up for our mission to discover the truth. So as of right now, Mars is in the western sky, about 45 degrees off the horizon. You can get an app for your phone, a sky map. It's a fun tool. It will even give you diagnostics on your device. It has a few sensors that it works with, which is quite interesting. Let me help you guys understand something real quick. Forget about that 2D image of the solar system. You need to get that image out of your head somehow, some way. That's first. Second, understand, and I know this is going to be hard for some of you to believe, but we are moving through space. How fast? The numbers are not important. I want you to understand this. The numbers change anyway. So, now think of the solar system as a cluster of objects, not including the stars. Don't think about the stars right now, just the planets. If you were to use a sky map, you would see that the planets are kind of all over the place. It looks like, right? All the planets are moving in the same direction through space, in a twisting, spiral-like fashion. Not really around the sun, but behind it. So, the sun is ahead of us, and the other planets trail it like a vortex, almost like the way you see it depicted in this animation. This is actually a very good rendering of the motion we're dealing with here, but this model is really a looping animation and it doesn't really represent the complexity of how each planet moves. I just wanted to give you a better rendition than the standard tabletop model. Now that you have that image in your head, you can imagine that moving cluster of objects, that mass moving through space. The sun is not moving in a straight line, by the way, like a shooting star. It's moving with the other stars around the galaxy center. The stars and the sun, while they are moving around the galaxy center, they are also rotating around each other. So imagine the sun's cluster, which we call the solar system, and a second star cluster that the sun rotates with, like a dance. 
And as these two star clusters rotate around each other, over time they get further apart, and then over time they get closer together. How close and how far they get together is dependent on a few outside influences. Cosmic voids, as well as the mass of the two stars. So whatever you're thinking Planet X is, has to do with that second cluster. Actually, while we're on the subject, once upon a time the planets in our system were much, much closer. Of course that would freak us out now, because it's not something we wake up to every day. Because they know exactly how these planets move over time, they can calculate where these planets are going to be in the near future. Right now they are in this rush to launch. Why? Because they know what we are going to be dealing with very soon. So they need to get their spacecraft up there before that window closes, or they may be delayed indefinitely. So. If you wanted to view Mars this year, October would probably be the time to do so as the Earth passes between it and the Sun around that time. It would be the fourth brightest object in the sky next to Venus. Now, officially, Galileo Galilei was recorded as being the first to view Mars with a primitive telescope. This is the early 1600s. If you were to use, say, a telescope with a 60 to 100 millimeter diameter, even with a high magnification, you would probably only be able to see the shape of the planet. You would likely need a telescope that has 115 to 130 millimeters, with a magnification of about 150 to see any details. Galileo's telescope, the diameter, was 37 millimeters and the magnification was 26. For those of you who know a little bit about this stuff, uh, does that make any sense to you? How close was Mars in the 1600s that you could see it through that telescope? It was around the mid 1600s where they discovered the 24 hour 40 minute rotation of the planet. Then a few years later the polar cap. Now in the 1700s, astronomers noticed seasonal changes in the appearance of the planet, which they theorized was life on the planet, changing due to the seasons, you understand? In other words, the surface of the planet appeared to change, you know, as a tree would change appearance in the winter months. In the 1800s, there were reports of canals that appeared to be engineered. But of course, they were dismissed as optical illusions. Now, fast forward to 1976. We have two Viking missions to Mars. Two spacecraft, Viking 1 and Viking 2. The same craft that took the photos of the face on Mars in 76. The purpose of the mission was to take high-resolution photos of the surface, analyze the atmospheric composition, and to search for evidence of life. Now, did they find anything? Well, what do you think? They found something and then tried to say it was nothing. They even discredited scientists who were saying they had enough evidence. They took some soil. This is what they did. They took some soil. They added a nutrient to the soil. The soil then produced a carbon isotope that is produced when microorganisms metabolize nutrients, okay? They then took the same samples of soil and exposed them to heat, darkness, things that would kill off microorganisms. This time they tried adding the nutrients and the isotope was not produced. Strange, isn't it? Folks, that is actually simple science. How did they know what nutrients to add and what equipment to use? Because it is done all the time here and they know exactly what the detection of this isotope means. So that was known to them in the late 70s, okay? See, I don't know if some people down at NASA are stupid or if they think we are all stupid. 
We all know now that there is water on Mars. They at least told us that much. Do you guys know what they are about to do next year? And this is where you have to pay close attention to what they're doing. Next year in February, a rover is scheduled to land on the surface of Mars, okay? It launched last month. That's only six and a half months. That's pretty fast, wouldn't you say, folks? Anyway, inside this rover is a double rotor helicopter, like a drone. Now, let me remind you that the atmosphere on Mars, the volume, is less than 1% of Earth's. The atmosphere on Earth is over 100 times denser than that of Mars. And the gravity on Mars is 62.5% less than the gravity of Earth. Yet these rovers move around the surface like monster trucks and they are going to fly a helicopter around. How? Did I miss something? Not only that, but they are using a solar panel to charge the battery on the Ingenuity helicopter. Solar panels. Do you know solar panels have to be calibrated due to filtering out of the sun's radiation through the atmosphere? By the way, how do parachutes work in a Mars atmosphere? How do storms work in an atmosphere like that? And you know they actually try to explain away all that stuff I've just stated? They try to explain it away, it's insane. Let me ask you all something. Who's keeping the rover equipment clean? Does it just clean itself? Cameras and all? Is it dirt proof? How do they keep these things from getting stuck? These are not satellites floating around Mars. These are man-made machines driving around in an inhospitable surface for years without any physical human maintenance whatsoever. None. Tell me how that works. Remote repairs, right? And see, this is one of the reasons why people have a hard time believing if this is all faked or real. I say it's a mixture of both. They show you what they want to show you. Men have been sighted through the camera of the rovers, repairmen probably, with very little clothing as you really don't need a spacesuit on Mars. You just go through the climatization for a few hours and suits can come off. So yes, they do lie to us. How many of you know about the rock pile discovered? The igloo made of rocks on Mars? People are spotting all types of anomalies in those camera photos. They are not doing all this stuff just to look at dirt, folks. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to spend so much time, resources, and money for some dusty red planet, right? You see, they want you to get used to Mars being a part of your normal vocabulary. Because I have a feeling soon, people are going to be talking about Mars on the daily. They are getting set to announce life on Mars, count on it. The question is what's going to happen after they do that? Because there are quite a few planets out there that they also have told us have no life. You know, NASA is sneaky. They tell you about what they are going to do after they've done it already. They want to send people to Mars. How many say they've done that already?